Hi, my name is Sanam and I will present joint work with my colleagues Michael Schilling, Michaela Neumeyer, Michael Backes and Sven Bugil about a comparative usability study of FIDO2 passwordless authentication. First, what is FIDO2? FIDO2 is a new open authentication standard that consists of two protocols, CTAP2 and WebAuth. Together, those protocols allow a relying party, for instance, a web service, to make use of hardware authenticators, for instance, security keys to authenticate users. FIDO2 supports two-factor and multi-factor authentication, but also single-factor authentication in which the hardware authenticator is the only factor. This single factor, passwordless authentication with FIDO2, has been declared as the killer of passwords by the media. So, we were wondering if FIDO2 is the king's layer of web authentication. In more details, we wanted to find out whether end users accept this paradigm shift from something they know to something they have, how they perceive the usability of this form of passwordless authentication, and which factors could inhibit the adoption by end users. To answer these questions, we conducted the first large-scale comparative usability study of FIDO2 passwordless authentication. We recruited 94 participants, which we randomly distributed between a password control group and passwordless authentication group. While the control group used regular text-based passwords, the passwordless authentication group used a security key as the single factor for authentication. Let me give you an overview of our study design. For details, I refer you to our paper. After we welcomed our participant and gave a study instruction, the participant watched a short introduction video about password-based authentication in which we recapped well-known benefits and drawbacks of text-based passwords. After the introduction video, our control group proceeded to a hands-on task where they had to register accounts on mock websites and log in to those accounts. Our mock websites Facebook and Schmuggel were based on the Facebook and Google Mail sites. Afterwards, we asked participants to reflect on this experience in a survey. We used standardized methods to measure usability, acceptance, and user-specific factors. To get a more complete picture of user perception, we also use free text questions to capture the ideas, benefits, drawbacks, and concerns that our participants see. Our passwordless authentication group proceeded differently after the topic introduction. Prior studies have shown that a lack of clarity about functionality and security benefits of authentication methods leads to a lower security rating, lower acceptance, and reluctance to switch. So, we decided for our study design to address this lack through an introduction of passwordless authentication and showing how to use the security key before letting our participants try it out themselves. For the hands-on task, we used again our mock fake book and a Schmuggel website, but this time supporting only single-factor authentication with FIDO2. In our FIDO2 introduction video, we summarize publicly available information from vendor sites like Ubico or from technology-related blogs and news. First, no more passwords are needed, and in a state, a security key can be reused for different accounts. The key costs around $40, which is the median price between low and high-end security keys on market. No secret data, like a password, need to be stored on the web service. And compromising the client does not leak any secrets either. Lastly, like our control group, our passwordless authentication group also answered the survey in which we asked them to reflect on their experience with passwordless authentication. As a result, our collected data allowed us to evaluate the usability and acceptance of FIDO2 passwordless authentication and to collect user concerns and feedback about the paradigm shift to passwordless authentication. Now, let me summarize the result of our study. The demographics of our study met the expectation for a study conducted in a university setting. 
Slightly more than half of our participants identified as female, most had a university degree, and our average participant was 25 years old. We did not find any differences in the demographic composition between our control group and our study group. Our quantitative results showed that passwordless authentication was more accepted than traditional text-based passwords and was perceived as more usable. Next, let me go through the main points we identified in our qualitative data. First, most of our participants mentioned the effort to authenticate in some way. Participants in the control group found the cognitive effort to create and memorize a large number of unique passwords a difficult and demanding task. For our participants in the passwordless authentication group, cognitive effort was not an issue. In fact, the reduction of cognitive effort compared to text-based passwords was a great, if not the greatest, advantage of passwordless technology. However, participants in this group criticize us that passwordless authentication requires carrying a device to be able to authenticate. In our study, the switch from password-based to passwordless authentication was associated with a clear shift from cognitive to physical effort, which reflects the paradigm shift of FIDO2 single-factor authentication away from something I know over to something I have. Participants from both groups thought about factors and problems that could affect the security of their accounts, but the threat models between groups differed greatly. Participants in the control group were primarily worried that weak and reused passwords or phishing attacks could compromise their accounts. Participants of our study group were mainly afraid that someone else could gain access to their accounts with a lost or stolen security key. Several participants raised the question how to revoke or recover account access in such a case and they wanted an additional layer of protection to protect the security key against unauthorized use, such as biometrics. Some participants also expressed a desire for a backup authentication method. However, one of our participants pointed out one very interesting aspect. The biggest advantage of passwordless authentication is the implicit guarantee that no one else can access the account as long as one is in positions of the security key. The disappearance of the security key would immediately warn about a potential unauthorized access to an account. This is something that passwords simply cannot offer. Another major problem were situational barriers. Participants in our study group complained about technical incompatibility of the USB-based security key with mobile devices that do not provide fitting USB interfaces. Participants from the control group came up with situations in which passwords seemed to be superior over token-based authentication. They mentioned the ability to spontaneously delegate accounts via telephone or using especially protected computers that do not provide physical access to standard interfaces, for example, a public computer in a library. Many participants also describe aspects connected to the mental migration process from password to passwordless authentication. This shift means a break with the well-established habits and traditions of users. We notice that our participants have a clear mental model of passwords. They know the pros and cons and have a certain understanding of the factors responsible for the security of a password. For passwordless authentication, such mental models must first be established in the user's mind. Although our video seems to be a helpful introduction to this new technology, obvious misconceptions in the free text responses show that the mental models of our participants are only rudimentary, which led to a lack of trust. On the other hand, the majority of participants in our study group described the authentication with the security key as a fun, pleasant, and exciting new user experience, while traditional passwords were described as monotonous, boring, and annoying. Lastly, and specific to our study group, there were doubts about the robustness and maturity of the authenticator device, as well as complaints about the price of the device. We also asked our participants in our study group 
if they would be willing to use passwordless authentication in their private lives. 16 participants were unconditionally willing to use it and explicitly highlighted the ease and convenience of passwordless authentication over password. The remaining 30 participants had different kinds of concerns. Among those concerns, the fear of losing access to their own account, the fear of illegal access by someone else, and mistrust were mentioned more frequently. In practice, users are not so detailed introduced to a new authentication method as in our study. So, we wondered if our videos influenced the participants in our passwordless authentication group. So, to evaluate the stability of our fundings, we repeated the study with a third group of participants, which forms our control group for single-factor authentication. Participants in our new third group still perform the hands-on task to register and log in to our mock websites with a security key as the single authentication factor. However, in contrast to the original passwordless authentication group, we did not show them any of the introduction or explainer videos. However, since users are very likely not familiar with using a security key, we added optional technical guidance to the website, which we copied from the guidance of the original Facebook and Google sites for setting up two-factor authentication with a security key. In terms of quantitative results, our prior fundings are stable. Even without introduction or explainer videos, participants found passwordless authentication more usable, accepted it more than text-based passwords, and the differences between the two passwordless authentication groups was non-significant. In terms of qualitative data, our two single-factor authentication groups were pretty much the same, with only few differences. We found our new control group was more worried about account access by others in case the authenticator is stolen or lost, and mistrusted the security key more, and stating more often that they needed more information. We also found differences in the willingness to use passwordless authentication, where the participants in the control group were mostly only conditionally willing to switch to passwordless authentication. Mistrust was mentioned more frequently as a reason to abstain. Those results were to be expected based on insights from prior works, since we never introduced the participants in the single factor control group to this new technology. So, this brings me to the discussion of our results. Wi Fi 2 passwordless authentication has great potential to replace text based passwords. We identified some obstacles on the road to adoption, for which we also try to point out potential future work or recommendations. First, we find the issue of recovery at a scale, a predominant concern among the participants in our passwordless authentication group was the loss of the security key and hence access to their accounts. What is particular to this setting is that the reuse of a single authenticator across multiple websites, which is considered a strong point of FIDO2, actually amplifies the recovery problem. In case of device loss, all affected accounts must be recovered. And currently, there is no proper support or guidance for users for a scalable recovery. A few participants raised concerns about device theft and account access by the thief. In comparison to larger scaling problems like phishing campaigns or server breaches, such attacks are a small scaling and targeted with need for physical access to the victim. However, at the end of the day, the subjective views of users would determine the adoption of passwordless authentication. So, we think it is worthwhile to investigate solutions how users can securely revoke access to their account without the need to first recover their access. Further, in contrast to passwords which can be entered anywhere, token-based authentication will currently always have corner cases in which it is not applicable. Users should be informed about corner cases in which they cannot make use of token-based authentication and allow them to adapt their authentication strategies. 
For instance, depending on the devices on which an account must be accessed, users choose suitable authenticator devices. A few participants pointed out problems with the authenticator we used in our study, a Ubico security key. Most of those concerns were about the limited connectivity and hence lack of support for other client devices like mobile phones with NFC or Bluetooth. Other concerns were about the price of the device, its robustness and usability, or more generally about the need to carry an extra device. Since FIDO2 does not define the form of the authenticator, just its capabilities and protocols, we think it is a great opportunity to tailor authenticator form and features to user demands. Maybe avoiding the need to buy and carry dedicated devices and to offer a form of personalized authentication. Finally, during our study, we noticed that our participants identify authentication automatically with passwords, and they naturally did not have a mental model of how passwordless authentication with a security key works. Some participants expressed mistrust into the hardware token, mostly due to a lack of transparency. So, the transition to FIDO2 passwordless authentication requires establishing mental model that see authentication more systematically. One path forwarded in this direction would be to draw from existing models about physical keys. For instance, that possessions of the key means no one else can access the account, that spare keys can and should be used, or to associate every account with the right physical key. And this brings me to the end of my presentation, and I'm happy to answer any questions that you have. Thank you.